Okay, this is the second example uh, respecting girders with floor beams. And uh, let's see what happens. We have to draw the influence line for the shear in the panel, not BD, but uh, what panel? What panel is this? AB. I don't know what it says. BD. AB. And the moment at D. So the moment here, and we need the shear at this panel. So this is ABCD. E F G H. And this is another typical example when the students go look, oh my god, look at that, that's so crazy. No, there's nothing mm -hmm. crazy here. You just have this is your girder. These are the floor panels, the floor beams, I'm sorry, these are the floor panels. But one of the floor panels is on top of the girder and one of the floor panels is not. So what? What is the big deal? We treat it exactly like in the same way that we will do with the regular unit influence lines or influence line. First of all, I'm going to put, I'm going to place the loads, the load at E. Or you can say when x equals zero if you want. What happened here? What happened when the load is located at E? If I put the total load there, what happens? We already discussed that. We don't have to do any calculation. So all the loads are, abs are absorbed by the pier, by the support right here. And they are transferred to this pile or pier or wall or whatever. But nothing is taken into, nothing is uh, transferred to this, to this uh, girder here. So all are zero. If this is the, the, the AB that I'm working, everything here is going to be zero. And also, if I do the moment here, the moment at D is going to be zero. The reason being, there's no load on top of the girder, period. That's it. Now, when the load is at A, the load is there. I move it from here to there. If the load is at A, or x equal to 15, from the wall, 15, from the beam 10, then uh, we do the calculations. Remember, this is going to be GY and this is going to be HY. And I told you, whatever you have one simple supported beam and the load is here, I can say that this reaction, reaction GY, you can do summation of moments if you want to and waste time, but you don't have to waste time. So if you do that, you can say this is this, the value of this, which is 30. 30 divided by the total length which is 40 and it's 0 0.75 so this is going to be 0 0.75 and this is going to be 0 0.25 once you have the reaction the only thing that you have to do is put your girder right there put your load of 1 on top of that bar put your reaction of 0 0.75 and put your shear let's call it B sub B V sub A here. So if you do summation of forces, and of course this point is the point A. So if you do summation of forces in Y, you can say that 0 0.75 minus 1 minus VA equals 0. And this is going to be negative 0.25, so VA equals negative 0 0.25. First value, done. Now once you, want, you want to calculate the moment, because that's the other part that we are asked to do the moment over there. Okay, no problem. I'm going to draw my beam up to the moment at D. This is the point D. This is the reaction of 0 0.75 that we just calculated. And the load is placed here. And here meaning this is A, this is B, this is D, and the distances are, you don't have to do this every single time. I'm just doing it because I'm explaining it to you. You can do it from here. Uh, this distance is 10. 10, because I'm using the beam, not this part. 10, 10, and 5. And the moment at D is going to be here. So if you do summation of moments at D, you get negative 0 0.75 times 25 
plus 1 times 15 plus MD equals 0 and you can calculate MD and MD is going to be equal this is 15 and this is a let me, check, let me do that. Dun, dun, dun. 0.75 times 25 plus 15. That's a negative 3.75. When you pass it to the other side, it's 3.75. There you go. Now, uh, let's keep moving the load. Now, the load is at B. Load is at B and the load is here at B. So if the load is at B, once again, you can do all the drawings that you want to, you can do all the calculations that you want to. Uh, actually, this is too long, so I'm sorry about that. But uh, here is gonna have my reaction, and here is going to have the load. The load is at B, this is the point B. This distance should be, should be, should be, but it's not. 10, and this distance should be 10 here. This should be the point uh, A. And the VA is going to be here. VA, but the load is here, so the load is not doing anything really in this panel. Now, how do you calculate this reaction? This reaction, well, when the load is at B, the load is exactly at the center. So it's going to be 0 0.5. This reaction is going to be 0 0.5. Now you do summation of forces in Y, and then you get your 0 0.5 minus VA. Do not put this because that doesn't make any sense to be a uh, copy there. And the reason it doesn't make any sense is because it's not acting there. 0 0.5. There you go. Now if we do the summation of moments at D, we do the same thing that we did here. This reaction now is 0 0.5. The load is not here, so this is what? This is 10, 10, 5, but the load is here now, acting at B. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. This is D, and the moment is here, moment at D. So if I do summation of moments at D, summation of moments at D equals 0 in this direction. If I do that, then I'm going to get negative 0 0.5 times 25 plus 1 times 5. I don't need the calculate plus MD equals 0. I don't need the calculator to do this calculator. This is every time that I say calculator, I, I remember I'll be back. Terminator. This is negative 0 0.5 times 25, negative 12.5, negative. 12.5 plus 5 is negative 7.5. Pass it to the other side. MD equals 7.5. Keep going. Now the load is at C. C. C means yes in Spanish. C. If the load is at C, what is going to happen is, remember, I'm also I'm only working in the panel, this panel, and this is the point A, but now my load is somewhere here. It's not affecting it at all. However, globally, that load applied over there is affecting the reaction at GY. How much is the reaction at GY? The reaction at GY, you always can do summation of moments from this point and calculate that. But if you have once once again, if you have that single case and the load is applied here, then the load at GY is gonna be this distance 10 divided by the total distance multiplied by the load. 1 multiplied by 10 divided by 40 is 0 0.25. And if you don't believe me, do the summation of moments. And this is then V sub why did I call this V sub B? A and V sub A here is this, so V sub A is going to be equal to 0 0.25. What about the moment? Moment at D, same difference. I learned that from my son, same difference. This is going to be 0 0.25. The load is going to be applied here, 
the moment has to be calculated there the total distance from here to here is 25 summation of moments here is MD is going to be equal to 0 0.5 times 25 MD equals 6.25 and somebody's gonna, I don't know, post a comment or something and say, why didn't you put the negative? Yes, I did put the negative. I'm just passing it to the other side. And that's what I'm doing. And last but not least, when the load is at F. No, yes, F here. When the load is at F. What happened when the load is at F? When the load is at F, once again, the load is here. That load is transferred directly to this wall. And nothing is on top of the beam. So that means that V sub A is zero and MD is also zero because there's not any load applied there. Now, here, you have to be careful with a, not careful, you just have to pay attention to what happened because so that means that the jump the beam the, the load is gonna jump from here to here no the jump the load is not gonna jump but what happened if the load is right there if the load is right there and I and I'm going to draw now that panel for example here I'm gonna say this is the panel E and this is the, pan, the part A and now I have a load acting there a load of 1 acting there where this distance is 5 and this distance is 10 and that will be the point where I have the floor beam so in this case when the load is here not here but there there's some part of the load that is transferred through this floor beam to the girder. Now, if you do the calculation, you're gonna end up with the load here is gonna be, at this point, if this is five, it's gonna be 10 divided by 15, 10 divided by 15, and the load here, at this part, is going to be five divided by 15, meaning one third, right? one third and this is two thirds now if remember this number because now I'm going to go later on to the to the shear diagram and we're gonna look for the value if I transfer the load here if I transfer the load here instead of being one is one third here I mean it's that value one third this is going to get part of the load this is going to get part of the load and whatever value I get from my shear diagram is going to be just interpolating between zero and that you do not have to do that you can do that if you want to but you do not have to do that what I'm trying to tell you is any load location between this and that is already going to be reflected in your shear diagram you don't have to do that you don't need well, if that places you do it you know what am I to take the, ple the pleasure from you if you want to do it now what is the last step that we have to do plot plot what are we plotting well we are plotting in this part the shear on the panel and in this part we are plotting the moment so moment at D and this is gonna be the shear at the panel a B now this distance is zero this distance is zero and now we have 15 10 10 10 15 15 10 10 10 15 so those are gonna be our distances right there 15 10 10 10 15 meaning 15 25 35, 15, 10, 10, what up? I'm missing something. 15, 25, 
35 I'm, I'm adding one extra I don't know why a B C and this is not here this is something here 50 yes and if you want to put the the letters let's put the letters so that will be e a, a B C and F and we have all the values so when the load is at E is 0, when the load is at A is negative 0.25, right there, negative 0.25. And then when the load is at B is positive, positive 0 0.5, positive 0 0.5. And then it goes down to 0 0.25. And it goes to zero. Zero. So basically, this is going to be like that. And this is going to be like that. And this is going to be like that. What I was trying to tell you before when I was explaining you this if at any point I want to know how much is the value of that force or of that shear when the load is exactly at 5 I just have to measure it from here, calculate it interpolate I can use that line to interpolate or the equation of the line to calculate the shear at any point here now the moment the moment is going to be the same thing so it's going to be E then A, B, C, F A, B, C, F which is 15, 25, 35, and 50. And you have the value here is 0. The value here is 3.75. 3.75. And then that thing goes to 7.5. That's going to be like a different slope. 7.5 and then it comes to 6.25 and to 0 so here we're going to have different slopes I'm going to do it with a different color just because I can so you're going to have something like this and then the slope is going to be bigger and the slope is going to change again and then the slope is going to change again here those are not continuous because they are not the same uh, slope and that will be the moment you see problem that looks really complicated and it's actually easy or easier than a bunch of other problems that you can find thank you for watching guys see you later